Bleak Blog, star date 17th of April 2020, Universal Credit and the Invisible Man. The last time I signed on the doll was in 1983 and I blurted a poo on the counter in the cubicle next door to me. It's a phone interview today, so obviously I'll be home and looking to avoid things climaxing quite so spectacularly. It had all been going so well in the hours previously. It was a smorgasbord of horror, but I was on it, essentially, until the labyrinthine online tunnels dead-ended me with the show-stopping request for my boyfriend's ID. Birth certificate, driving licence, passport, or three choices from this list in which, spectacularly, every single item is a long-lost entity. His previous addresses are hidden in a fog of multiple occupancy, He's lost the billing address for his mobile phone, which is mysteriously with Blue Yonder, which seems to have evaporated completely. And all the while, the Minotaur clipped clopping alongside me, hissing, if you don't complete this impossible task by the time the sun touches the sea, you have to go back to the start and repeat it in its entirety, whilst we attach electrodes to your genitals and flay your senses with a knotted rope, obviously. An invisible man has somehow moved in with me, a body that neither absorbs nor reflects light has been sitting on my settee. He's got a long-sleeved coat and a bandaged face, and increasingly, he stays in his room where he has built a chemical laboratory, where research into optics has changed his body's refractive indices. I say to the Universal Credit bloke, look, seriously, he does exist. I've seen him with my own eyes like loads of times previously. In 1999, the Times said he was one of the best songwriters in the country. I don't suppose that could count at all, and he goes, no, nah, not really. The last time I signed on the doll was in 1983 and I bloked a poo on the counter in the cubicle next door to me. It's a phone interview today so obviously I'll be home and looking to avoid things climaxing quite so spectacularly.